<laughs> Let's have some wine. It's wine time. It's five o'clock somewhere. And um, we're sitting here taking a look at your club wines, and one of them in particular, which the, I tasted this morning and I really like, is called Preston of Dry Creek. It's a Zinfandel. That's the name of the grape variety. And Preston's very well known for... The Dry Creek area is famous for Zinfandel. And, you know, wine was put here on planet Earth for one reason, to provoke pleasure. Those are the words right out of my professor's mouth when I went to the University of Bordeaux. So if wine is here to provoke pleasure, then tasting wine determines how much pleasure is provoked or, in some cases, not provoked. That's all tasting is. It's a, so I, I developed a little, a little uh, wine evaluation form that has axes that go from left to right, from 1 to 10, representing 0 to max. And so what I do is we look at the wine by looking at its appearance, its smell, and what happens in the mouth, which is threefold, attack, evolution, and finish. That's the, the three waves of flavor that are in wine. It takes about five seconds to really analyze the wine. You've got to have the foretaste, which is the wine logging on, shaking hands, saying, hi, hey, I'm Zinfandel. And then you saying, to, saying back when you taste it, oh, wow, but... You have a lot more to say than just a handshake, you know, because of the acid in this wine, which is why I like it a lot, is that it's very fruit forward and it's very smooth and very silky. But as soon as it goes in your mouth, you've got to keep it in your mouth for about a second or two. And all of a sudden, the flavors start to evolve. Why? Thanks to a good acidity, if good acidity is there. And good acidity is not always there in Zinfandel because it's a very ripe grape. But this one has really good acidity, so this wine kind of shakes and says, Hi, I'm this big, jammy, fruity Zinfandel. You put it in your mouth. And it just, it just opens up, up, up. And it goes for another two or three seconds, and then your saliva, which is alkaline, neutralizes that acidity. So the flavor starts to shut down, such that when the wine starts to fade, which we call the finish... The fade, the longer the fade, the longer they finish, the longer the aftertaste, the better the wine. And this one has not only a big beginning, a big high, a big aloha. It fills your mouth with flavor. It's still going. And it continues and goes on and on and on. Imagine if you put your finger, your finger, put your foot on, the, on a piano pedal. And you hit the note middle C and then you hit the pedal. The pedal is a sustaining pedal, which sustains the note on a piano. Well, that's what this wine does in the aftertaste. It sustains for a long time, and that's due to great acidity, great extraction, fine winemaking, and just, you know, intense freaking wine <laughs> that, that not all of them have, and this one has it in spades. So I like it very much, and it's, uh, it's delicate. I mean, I, I, I say this wine has raspberry and plum, in the nose, in the aroma, I said, in the attack, lovely fruit, evolution, perfect acidity, not good acidity, perfect acidity, long finish, you know, um, full body, because it's 13.9 in alcohol, and then I kind of sum out the wine by saying, this is a big wine, parentheses, mouthful, lovely extracted fruit, um, Deliciousness. It has what I call deliciousness. <laughs> um, you know, crowd pleaser. Um, and it's got the most important one word of all. The middle of this triangle has an X in it for balance, which means every force, sweet, sour, and bitterness, is all playing in a chemical symphony together, such that nobody's, nobody's playing out of tune, nobody's out of beat, Everybody's and that and it, it sustains for a long period of time. That, my friends, is a perfect wine. <laughs>